Welcome again. I am Kaya the Alliant and this is State of the Nation. We invite you to be a part of the show. Use the hashtag State of the Nation and tweet also at me at K-A-Y Alliant. Your thoughts are much appreciated on the subjects we're just about discussing tonight. Now, assenting to the 2018 budget, that's going to be our first topic. Let's get right to the program. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari will sign the 2018 budget next week. This was revealed on Wednesday by the President's spokesperson, Mr. Femi Additional, at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting in Abuja. The National Assembly had passed the budget on May the 16th, over seven months after the President submitted the proposals to the lawmakers. Now, I have uh, with me in the studio to discuss uh, this issue. I have Mr. Bala Zaka, who is a chartered accountant and chartered tax analyst. Also with me in the studio to discuss this is Mr. Ali Dodo, public uh, affairs analyst. Thank you very much, both gentlemen, for Thank joining you. me. Thank you very program. much. Thank you very much for having us. We've always um, had the challenge of late budget approvals and signings and all of that, and they've always affected our economic cycles. Correct. What's the implication, again, of this development? There are so many implications, really. Uh, first of all, it, it shows that uh, Nigeria cannot actually work in tandem with serious investors. It also shows that Sometimes when, when, when the Nigeria, when I talk about Nigeria at this time, I'm referring to the government. It shows that sometimes when the government is taking national decisions in natures like this, the government doesn't know or does not take into consideration how the government is hurting investors, local and international investors. But first of all, you know, when we talk about the budget, we're talking about future plan in monetary terms and this time around we are talking about the federal government budget because other state governments have passed their respective budgets with what is happening and we are talking about june 2018 i see the the budget of 2018 being very optimistic in the first place and during the execution stage we are likely to adopt one in nigerian parlance we best describe as fire brigade approach because that's the only way we can, we can have so many things achieved. We are also talking about the year preceding the year of election. Mm. So the government must do something about its goodwill. The government must do something to convince Nigerians that the government is doing well. Mr. Then, uh, uh, hold, hold your thoughts a minute. Uh, let me go to Mr. Ali Dodo. Okay. Budgeting is one thing, and it's a very scientific exercise. Correct. But the other thing is the politics that goes with budgeting in Nigeria. We saw the back, back and forth uh, between the National Assembly and the executive. Uh, how can we deal with that? Okay. Um, to start with, there is, a, there is a procedure, there's a process. The executive is supposed to play certain parts the legislature too are supposed to play certain parts. So where is the conflict coming from? That is the first question we should ask ourselves. The president and his team, you know, they submitted the uh, budget proposal on time. And um, we have uh, like a timeline for the budget to pass the first, um, first reading, second reading, committee stage, and all what's not. And all these things have time frames. So where exactly is the delay coming from? Is it the fault of the executive or the fault of the National Assembly? 
your guess is as good as mine. Yes, clearly so in this matter. We saw that, uh, to be fair to the executive, the budget came into the National Assembly quite early. Uh, is there any justification for this delay? Whatever is the reason is, is, is irrelevant in this case. As far as I am concerned as an investor or a Nigerian, I will want to see a disciplined budget cycle. I will want a situation where, if possible, the Nigerian government should stick to what we call January to December budget fiscal year. Because there are so many things that are involved. You know, when you talk about these delays, first of all, the value or the, the production capacity of Nigeria in terms of crude oil or revenue tricking in are different. First of all, we started with about 8.6 trillion naira, right? As we speak now, we are talking about 9.1 trillion naira. That is fantastic because some good revenues are coming up and uh, from non-oil revenues, we're making good money. From also the oil revenues, the price of crude oil has gone up. Our production was 1.8 million barrels as assigned by OPEC. But we also have what we call light, I mean condensates, which is light oil. So when of about 400,000 barrels per day. So by the time you add that, we are almost producing like 2.2 or 2.3, you know, million barrels, which is fantastic for us. But we should also have it at the back of our minds that at the end of June 2018, OPEC member countries and about 10 nations that will be led by Russia are likely to meet together and review the production quotas. That has to do with international play and other dynamics. But the key thing is this. When you talk about planning, a lot of people are keying their activities to what we are doing. Yes, we can say our external reserves are what? Are rising. But as they are also rising, our debt is also ballooning. We can say our growth to GDP is looking fantastic. But, I mean, our GDP to uh, our relative growth, you know, is looking fantastic. Or our debt to GDP is looking fantastic. But what about our debt to revenue? It's also looking scary. There are so many things the government needed to do together. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. whichever way, time is no longer our friend. Absolutely. Oh. All right, uh, let's deviate a bit from, from that matter. T uh, today, Muslims all over the world celebrate the Eid al-Fitr. And the overwhelming message from the president is peace. Correct. <laughs> is, is it a message in the right direction? How do you respond? OK, you know, um, to start with, this um, Eid al-Fitr, it's an Islamic festivity that marks the end of the Ramadan season. The, as we all know, the Ramadan season is all about being close to God, trying to uh, cleanse ourselves of all the sins and things that, um, you know, worldly things that, um, that Islam um, does not really, you know, support. Allow me so, to come in again. Uh, we, we know the tenants. Nigeria is a very religious country. Why then is it that it's here we see all sorts of unthinkable things? Are we... Explain to me. Uh, you see, um, the president is on point by trying to um, preach, uh, preach peace at this point in time because we are at a crossroad whereby there's so many atrocities being committed all over the country. You know, we have the issue of the AIDS men, the issue of um, 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 the unrest in the Niger Delta region and um, what's happening in the Northeast. So uh, the president coming out to try to preach peace is in line with um, the tenets of uh, Islam. Islam mm -hmm. enjoys peace and uh, yeah, what um, the, the religion is all about, you know, preaching peace to people and uh, people are not only meant to show you know, um, humble, humble themselves during the Ramadan right. period yeah. is what is the president is trying to tell us is that we should try and emulate all the good tenets of Islam even after the fasting period so that, you know, Nigeria can... All know, right. Come. Uh, all right, great. Uh, Mr. Uh, Balazaka, uh, we hear peace preached every time when Christians are celebrating, when Muslims are celebrating. Correct. Peace, peace, peace. Correct. But it appears people are not listening. Correct. Is there a problem in the com Is there some noise in the communication channel? Or what do you think is the problem? No, there, there is no noise. The only fact is that we don't want to accept 
and understand and practice that definition of what is called peace. Peace is the tool for global unification. Recently, we heard that the President of the United States met with the, with, with the leader of North Korea. The only thing they are looking for is peace. When you hear that there is a peninsula, not in good terms with another peninsula, when you heard that political parties are clashing, the only reason is because they are yet to have what we call peace. There is this saying that the seed of growth and development can only be planted on the soil of peace. And that mm. simply means once, as the president explained, so it's a big word that we need to analyze. That simply means that once you place the soil of peace and you now plant the seed of growth, you will experience growth. If you plant the seed of political stability on the soil of peace, you will experience political stability. If you decide mm. to plant the seed of economic growth, economic mm. understanding, whichever way you look at it, so it's a soil that is on the ground. What are we planting? Mm. But you cannot also plant if you don't understand the chemistry of your soil. Mm. The soil is the soil of peace. Mm. If we are ready to have and use peace as a national state and a global unification tool, we will grow and get to places. Gentlemen, thank you both for coming on the program, State thank of you. the Nation. Thank, thank you for your time. I have been speaking with Mr. Balazaka, who is a chartered accountant and a chartered tax analyst. I also had on the program with me uh, Mr. Ali Yudodo, a public analyst. Thank you both for joining us on State thank of you. the Nation. We'll take a short break on the program right now. When we return, the lead counsel to the suspected kidnapper, Chuku Dimeme Om Oma DK, also known as Evans, Mr. Olukoya Ogunbeje, has withdrawn from his defense. We'll be looking at the implications right after now. Join us again.